So from my understanding, the person in question, Noah cheated on his wife, whom I don't know who either of those people are. I only know Foosley in this situation with Foosley. And I just, I just want to take a peek, okay? I wanted to watch this stuff without watching it from the perspective of someone who's like, can you believe this crazy sick drama? Oh my God. So you'll never believe it. And it's like, oh my God, dude. I get it. You need Kim, you need the keeping up with the Kardashians, but for gamers, I get it. I understand, but I just want to watch the video. Okay. This is not how I wanted my first stream in my new apartment to go. I was 12 minutes from going live earlier today. Um, I was ready to cook some sweet potatoes. Um, oh, are you doing okay? We're worried. You know what? I'm, I'm doing actually pretty, go pretty okay. I'm doing okay. Um, and, uh, I'm doing okay. It's, um, it's just like, for, for those of you who have no context, I'll give you all the context. Um, it's such a weird dynamic. Like me even like, God, I don't know. I've had a lot of thoughts today. Um, yeah, but for, for context, for people who, um, have no idea what's going on, um, what happened? Oh my God. I feel like I'm about to break your guys' hearts. <laughs> Just like I did for my mom today when I when it when like it all came out I called my mom the first person I did and I was like mom I have to tell you something but you have to promise like you're not gonna be disappointed in me as a daughter <laughs> and I can't even tell you the first question she asked actually it was awful she had, the first thing she said she said was did you get and then she asked if the r word and I was like no mom I didn't she's like oh thank god I'm like mom <laughs> but I do have something to tell you and um and um and so pretty much if you guys have no idea um there is a thread that dropped today on um I know moms think the worst but it was justified I guess um but pretty much uh, a thread dropped today that about m myself and another youtuber named Noah J and I wanted to give context to it um, and what happened and in, in 2021 and just like explain myself and of course like apologize but I figured I would just address this earlier than later and just sit on it and um, I would at the second I saw it I was never going to deny anything and if I'm being honest I have sat on this for a couple years now and I I've thought about just saying it like with without names right I've I've because I, when I feel something or I'm going through something, I, I want to talk about it. And I, I thought about just saying like the story of what happened without saying who was involved and just to get, get it off my chest and to like tell, because I don't want people to support me without knowing who I am, you know, and, and things I've done. And I feel like when you do that as a creator, you just feel like you're lying. Like, I just feel like if you knew everything about me or all the skeletons in my closet, you wouldn't support me. And I think that's fair. I think you can look at somebody and be like, I don't like that you did this. Um, I'm not going to support you. And so I would actually, after I tell you guys all this, if that's what you think about me, if that's what you, if that's what you say to yourself, you're like, wow, I see you completely differently. I don't want to support you anymore. I am like so fine with that. And like, seriously, completely fine. I think you can. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to catch to the chase. So um, in 2021, Edison and I, we we um this is so weird so i'm having an out-of-body experience because i've been like i'm like i know that so many people are gonna like my friends are gonna some of my friends are gonna find out this way a lot of a lot of my friends not a lot of, i would say like a handful of my friends already know and have known for years because i confided in them back then but some of them i didn't um so they're, they're gonna be like what is going on <laughs> well like, anyways in 2021 um edison and i we obviously broke up everybody knows this i if you don't know I used to be engaged. Um, I was in a relationship of like six years. Uh, we started dating a long time ago. Anyway, so Edison and I had a rocky, a very rocky end of our relationship. Um, I got like cold feet and um, there was just a lot of stuff between the two of us that we, we just realized like, we're not ready for this. And we decided to end our engagement and we, we ended it. We, we, well, before we ended it, we took a break and then we, it was like a on and off a little bit. Uh, we weren't together. We were like, Hey, two weeks away from each other. Let's see. That didn't work. We we're like, Hey, what's the point of a break? Let's just break up. Right. So we broke up and then we didn't say anything publicly for like a month, a month and a half. 
right? Um, we announced publicly that we broke up. But um, before that, when I was broken up, before it was public that I was broken up, um, I went to the 100 Thieves Creator Camp. And we, um, when I was there, I was obviously a mess. I was just trying to distract myself, but I had just got, gotten out of an engagement. So I um, was, you know how I am with when I, when I yap, I like, I just talk to everything, uh, everybody and I just say things. So we were, we were getting cozy. Everyone got really like, got to know each other pretty well. We we're staying up to like two, three, four, five 5 a.m. Just like by campfires and stuff. And so I got to know a guy there named Noah J and he's a YouTuber and stuff. 50% of chat is like, we need to go faster. Get to the point, get to the point, get to the point. And the other 50% of chat is like, guys, just chill. It's not that. It's like literally context. <laughs> I don't get why anyone cares about this. Okay. I mean, I agree with you. He's, he's with a hundred thieves super friendly dude. And so, um, I was like, Oh, this guy's awesome. And so I, I started to open up, I opened up a couple people about it, but he was one of the people that I started to tell. And I was like, I treat, I, I treat a lot of the stuff, a lot of the internet stuff and the, a lot of it, a lot of the internet happenings as, um, I treat it the same way that I treat a lot of, um, very famous movies and TV shows. Like, I watched Blade Runner, not because I wanted to watch Blade Runner, but because everybody always says, how have you not watched Blade Runner yet? I hate being out of the loop. I hate being the person. And these are like, I don't know, streaming is weird because it's like people are kind of your coworkers, but kind of not your coworkers. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, and I hate not knowing. I hate everybody else talking about some shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? What are you guys fucking talking about? What do you think about Blade Runners? I mean, it was, I mean, it was, it was fine. A little slow for my taste but it was fine. I, like, I just, me and my fiance, like my ex-fiance, we just, we're like, we're, we're, um, we broke up and I'm going through, like, it's like a really hard time. I don't know how to deal with things and like, was it the right decision? Yada, yada, yada. So um, he then confided in me and he told me that he like, basically like, hey, he's like, I'm married. Marriage is not that simple. He's like, um, basically explaining that it, him, and like that him and his wife like have struggles too. And I felt very comforted knowing that like, you know, when I look at it, like that my relationship fell apart, that like other people's like from the outside, it might look perfect, but it's not perfect. Like relationships just aren't perfect, right? And it felt comforting to, to, to know that. Um, and so I, I felt, so I talked to him more and um, we talked and I remember we stayed up like till five and we talked um, and I felt so like, oh, like understood. And so the camp, the camp ended. And after the camp, I was like, wait, I like feel like we should continue our conversation. And like, and that's when we, we did, we just, we kept talking and we talked about, he shared more about his relationship and essentially right then and there was like where I should have known it was like, not okay. In my mind, it was like, oh, he's married. Let me if anything, like, let me, like, I know he's married. So it, there's nothing, right? It's like just two people going through it. And I don't know if you've ever been broken up with or broken up with someone or ended a relationship, but like you look for other people who are there to talk to, right? You, you confide in people and, and people who really listen to you and people, it's really easy to like trauma bond with somebody. And I think that that is obviously in a relationship, it's like not okay to, I think it's like very, like from my perspective, at least it's very inappropriate to like. She should just say, I slept with a married man. I'm sorry. We don't even know. If, first of all, I don't even know if it's physical cheating. I'm, I, I thought I read somewhere that it was emotional cheating. So maybe we hold off on telling her what she should have said if we don't know what she did like i'm if i'm in a relationship i'm not going to go listen Maybe to like one little, guy just, vent about his relationship problems to me like that's teeny, already teeny, like teeny, crossing the line right and so obviously the line was already crossed at camp just me like me listening to his problems i felt like was already crossing the line but in my mind i kept justifying like oh okay this is me helping, if anything. I was like, you should go get therapy. You guys should And for go the record, yeah, work. I think emotional cheating is worse, to be very clear. This is my opinion. 
I, I think it's worse. Got it. Um, like, you know, like you maybe you got married young, but like you guys can still go forward and fix it. Right. And yeah, I totally agree with you. If she's trying to get this off her chest, it's worth it to explain the feelings and processes that went into it rather than just stating a headline of what happened. Yeah, they're equally bad. This is just my subjective opinion. You guys are welcome to have a very different opinion. You guys are welcome to have any opinion you want on this because this is a personal matter between people. It's a case by case thing and every person is going to respond differently. For me personally, I think emotional cheating is worse. Um, but I absolutely selfishly enjoyed his company and, and in a, in a, like in a way that I shouldn't have, right. Knowing like and the way I thought about it was like, if I'm his wife, I'm not comfortable with him on a call with me. Right. Like that's, that's it. Right. Um, so we kept calling and we were like, cause he was back in Texas at the time and we were just like on calls and we were like talking and then we play Valorant. And I remember we just play Valo and stuff. And then over time, pretty much, I just, like, didn't want to admit it, but I developed feelings, and he developed feelings, and it was just, like, we didn't, we didn't want to admit it, but, like, we kept talking, and then I was, like, and he said, like, I think I'm going to get a divorce, pretty much. He's, like, I've been, it was, like, he was already talking about it right from the start. It's crazy the that he was, like, it's actually insane that she's getting um, crucified for this. That's just crazy to me. I'm going to like, this is my hottest take. This is actually my hottest take. Um, human beings were not necessarily made for a cut. Sorry. Not every single human being was made for a cut and dry monogamous relationship, but it is what all of us have been sold. And relationships and human beings are really fucking complicated. Some people, I've met people, I used to think that, like, I used to think that everybody could and should be able to enjoy things that are not monog mono monogamous. I've met more and more people now that I feel like I have met a lot of people that are genuinely just monogamous people. They are, that is who they are. And they don't want anything else. And I'm like, damn, okay, well, you know what you want. And I've, like, had conversations just like friends of mine have been like, so do you just stop experiencing all forms of attraction to other people? And their stance is like, yeah. Yeah. I just don't care anymore. And it's never happened when I'm in a relationship and I'm happy with who I'm with. I just don't care about anybody else. And I'm like, hey, then you sound like the right person for monogamy, actually. Yeah. If you and your partner both feel that way completely entirely, then shit, it sounds like you know what you want. Um, pop off king <laughs> pop off <laughs> um but the thing is i don't know that most people were made for that i don't know that everyone was made for that but i'm also of the opinion that i as someone who's tried uh monogamy and non-monogamy and preferred non-monogamy a lot more um i i don't know i i think that the There is a very freeing aspect of, I don't care who, I don't care that the person I'm dating, if I'm dating someone, I really don't care if they see other people. I don't care. I've never cared. I don't think I ever will care. And I've had this opinion since I was basically a teenager. And in instances when I had it happen, I just didn't care. And it was freeing because I knew at the end of the day that who I was dating wanted to be with me. And it, it wasn't that I had to stop them from seeing other people to get that. I was getting it despite the fact that they could see other people. Um, obviously, communication is absolutely required and necessary. STDs, question mark. Guys, do, do people not, do, do, did people not get like basic sex ed? You. You should always, 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 regardless if you're monogamous or not monogamous, really quickly, you should always be getting tested. Okay? Actually, one of the biggest problems is that we think that if you're married or you're dating one person, you're going to be safe, but <laughs> people go and have sex with other people. You should always be getting tested anyways. You should have, your relationship should be built on trust and you should be getting tested all the time. Not like literally all the time to be very, very clear. That's a, a hyperbole, but 
especially in an open relationship or in a non-monogamous relationship, if you're in a in a relationship with someone that you trust and that trusts you, they would naturally want to get tested and get the other person to get tested and use protection. That's like very obvious. And in the instances that I have been non-monogamous, it's not even about going out and having sex all the time. It's just like, you go out for the first time in like a year <laughs> and you hit it off with someone. Like the way normal the shit happens. Not needing it, which is one reason testing is so important. It's not, it's not like, I think there's this misconception that like non-monogamy means that both people need to be trying a new flavor of ice cream every week. I got to do this. I, I'm clearly not satisfied with my relationship. I got to go test this out. It's more of just like, oh, this thing doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, you date someone for the person that they are, not for the fact that you're having sex with them. And every, however long, if they want to, or you want to see someone, Sure, who cares? Doesn't really matter. It's, I, I don't know. But the fact that, here's the thing. This is my, this is my opinion. Would you be okay with your SO having a friends with benefit? I mean, yeah, I don't care. I, I, this has never been a thing for me. I've never been a particularly jealous person and I don't plan on starting. And it's very freeing. <laughs> it's, You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how freeing it is and how comforting it is and relaxing it is. And comparing my non-monogamous relationship to my monogamous relationship, I, I, I had a strong preference for the non-monogamy just because you build like a stronger connection, I feel like. This doesn't apply for everyone, to be very clear. I'm speaking for myself. You build a stronger connection with that person because you know that sex is not the only thing keeping you together. In fact, it's irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant. And that's cool. It's very cool. The thing is, going back to what I was saying earlier, right? Because here's the thing, if you're trying to enter an open relationship or a poly relationship, whatever, you're trying to enter non-monogamy just so you can have sex with as many people as possible, dude, you should not be in a relationship. That's not the point of those relationships. The point of it, and especially this is why everybody judges people who are like, we should open the relationship. It's like, no, dude, you just want to go have sex with other people. That's what, what's going on here. And realistically speaking if you talk to in my experience if you talk to most people in um non-monogamous relationships it's more of just like oh hey it's been like six months i went out on the town i hit it off with this random person cool when things happen to happen and you happen to have chemistry with run one random person for the first time in like months you don't have to be like well i can't pursue this because i'm in a committed relationship you can still be in a committed relationship and be like, oh, th this temporary uh, physical attraction that I had for this person who I had chemistry with does has no bearing on my long-term relationship or whatever. Um, but there is, unfortunately, a large number of people who do this and, unfortunately, a big stigma <laughs> with non-monogamy because the idea is, well, these people just want to have sex with everyone all the time. And if you, if that's what you want, you shouldn't be in a relationship. If your goal is just like, I want to be having sex all of the time, it doesn't sound like you should be in a relationship. It sounds like you want to have a lot of sex and that's it. <laughs> so you should go do that, have fun. And then maybe when you're more interested in some type of commitment, you should get in a relationship. Now, for me personally, I don't know how people do polyamory because... I, <laughs> how do you date more than one person and have any time at all? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my, these people be having like a full-time job. They have pets, hobbies, and multiple relationships. You must be planning your whole life on Google Calendar. God damn, dude. Mad respect, bro. Mad respect. I can't even remember to do the dishes on time. Fuck. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness, man. Fuck Christ, dude. Oh. My wife and I saw you across the bar. We hate your vibes. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> oh. Anyways, um sorry, really quickly back to the topic at hand. The reason why I don't think most people were necessarily made for monogamy is because so many people have cheated. <laughs> If monogamy was the natural state of human beings, cheating wouldn't happen. The reality is, if you're attracted to one person, and you're attracted to the way that they look and the way that they sound and their personality, you really think no one else on the, on the planet has other attractive features that are in your partner? The reality is, you like certain things, you dislike certain things, you date the person you date because they have the largest number of things you like. It doesn't mean that magically, let's say really simple, very, very shallow, simple, simple, simple. You, what's a unique, slightly, what about like, mm, let's make it simple. Let's make it simple. Let's say you like brunettes. You like brunettes with, I don't know, green eyes. And that for you is like peak sexual attraction, peak physical attraction for you. And that's one of the things that you really like in your partner. What, magically that turns off when you see a different person who is a brunette with green eyes? No, it's still there. You're, what you like is still out there in the world and other people as well. And it doesn't mean you have to shut off that part of your brain consistently all the time, right? Me, a brunette with green eyes blushing. <laughs> the reality is, if you experience attraction for one person, you can very easily experience attraction for another person who looks very similar. The problem for me, okay, this is the problem for me. What if you like couches? Okay. <laughs> the problem for me is lying. <laughs> I don't really care if people have whatever experiences they have with their partners or outside of their relationship or whatever. The people who lie and then they have affairs for years, that shit is like, I really don't like that. Because that's like, you are stringing this person along and you're hurting this person in the long run. And I think that that's like very unacceptable. And I get how that can happen. You start lying and then you can't stop or whatever. I conceptually i get it but you have a responsibility to your partner to be up like forthcoming immediately because it's just not fair to them it's just not fair to them for you to just lie for a long 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 time and just continue having this affair if you feel this way about someone else you should have a, an agreement with your partner that you would come to them and talk to them about whatever that's what the problem is that's like and at that point that's the problem is that you can't trust right so that's all I wanted to say on that topic, but let's keep going. I'm and also the situation that Fusli is describing is like, this is a thing that happens literally all the time because human beings are not hardwired innately to be monogamous. It ha it, it <laughs> this is a thing that is so common that you start talking to someone who is in a closed relationship and you're like, oh, well, that person's married. We can just be homies. We can be friends. And then you develop feelings for them or they develop feelings for you unintentionally. But that's because you felt such a level of comfort because you felt like nothing would happen. That like, that's like, is that not something that is, I think, common, right? I don't understand living with the guilt. I'd rat on myself by omission. Oh, yeah, no, no. I can't live with, like, guilt is the problem. I, I just can't do it. I'm also such a yapper. I mean, that's why I'm a Twitch streamer. I would yap on myself immediately and be like, uh, yeah, sorry, this isn't working. <laughs> I don't know how people do the lying. Like, how do people do the lying for years or months? And they're, like, making up lies and excuses. And like, I'm just going to the store. Ha, 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 ha.
Um, I knew someone in a long-term relationship, but they were just going along on autopilot for years. My friend went on vacation and met someone, which was nice, but her immediate thought was I should break up with my partner, but she still wanted to pursue this new relationship. It was very wrong to her current partner because their agreement was monogamous. What do you mean? Oh, her immediate thought was not I should break up with my partner. Oh, okay. Okay. Also, people pretend like it's this, um, here's the thing, right? Um, really quickly. People pretend like emotional cheating, which is basically just you start talking to someone and then you both start liking each other more than friends. And people pretend like there's a there's a very clear zero and one and zero is not cheating. And then suddenly it goes to one. But that's not what happens. What happens is like you start to grow feelings for someone, maybe a little bit more. And then at some point you've hit one and you're like, You've been going at one for a while. Sorry, I didn't draw this chart correctly. And you're like, wait. Oh, fuck. <laughs> How did I end up here? Oh. This is about emotional cheating, by the way. The easy way to overcome emotional cheating, guys is to be the most annoying person you are, you can be and know what you want. Source me. As someone who's very annoying and who knows what I want, it's I think it's impossible for this to not happen to me, but like once I start, know, I know what I like. So when I see what I like, I'm like, let's run some numbers before this develops into anything. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, crunching the numbers, pros, cons. And then you make the decision like, oh, we got to stop this friendship, dog. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. We got to stop this friendship. You're married. And I know I will grow to like you. I know I will. So I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> I am not going to be the one to ruin your marriage. No, 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 no. But like, that's hard to do. It's like what? The person that brings you comfort and joy that you like to hang out with, that you don't plan on doing anything with. Um... And you don't want to enter that relationship and ruin their relationship, but you want that friend that you can talk to and confide in. And you just have to be the adult and be like, no, I can't talk to you and be your friend because I will grow to like you too much. We're going to, I'm going to do this. I let myself be like, I think I'm going to, I think I was like that, like switch something in my brain that was like, there's hope that we could be together I was like okay then I can like wait until papers are signed and then like we could be together after all of this but throughout that entire thing like that's like what am I doing you know what am I doing and I'm going to bed every night and I'm on google going like it what counts what constitutes emotional cheating what constitutes that like what am I doing what like I, I was trying to justify my mind I was like oh well they're going to they're going to get a divorce so, so I'm allowed to feel this way, right? And then what's the like, context? Oh, sorry. Anyone who's just hopping in, uh, some people are stuck in abrogatory. Sorry. Um, anyone who's just hopping in, well, we'll go into the context when people are not in abrogatory. Battle with that feeling, and then I was like, I was like, you know, like I was just going back and forth trying, like the the mental gymnastics you go through, and I went through to tell myself that what I was doing was not wrong, is insane is insane because I come from somewhere where like literally cheating is death. Like you are a awful person to do that to somebody you love. What is wrong with you? How could you do that? Especially like, you know, my past, like my friend was cheating on in, in high school, I mean, college, like um, for those of you who know, like the whole, like, you know, um, with my ex and stuff. And I like, of course, so I know what it feels like to be on the other side. And so like, the amount, the amount of gymnastics I was just going through. Um, but it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. The moment we got on those calls um, was where, like, the moment it, we, we opened up like that was where it was, like, in my mind, that was already, like, that was crossing the line entirely. Um, I want to just, like, some people are saying that I um, cheated on Edison. Um, no, I did not. Um, we were broken up. 
it, 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 whatever. Um, that it, 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 no. Okay, I did not. One hundred percent. Um. Oh, sorry. It was because we broke up yes, Aaron, that I really felt the some. need to, Girl, to dump so my emotions on people. I was like, I'm going through this and I, and I don't know how to deal with a breakup and I don't know how to publicly, I don't know how to, like, it's not a normal human thing to go through a breakup and then to have to announce your breakup publicly and then to have people speculate about your breakup. And I was like dealing with all these. Sorry, really quickly. Let's clarify something. She's arguing that cheating is evidence of a problem with monogamy. No, I'm arguing that people cheat not because they're this in this magic group of um, bad, evil people that are cheaters. This is as reductive as saying people who commit crime commit crime because they're criminals. No, material conditions matter. The situation you're in matters. The fact that people cheat, the fact that people are in relationships with one person and then for whatever reason decide to go and seek out other people is evidence that there are some people that can be attracted to more than one person. Never has it happened, in my opinion. Well, not sorry, never has it happened. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. There's a reason why the meme exists of guy who cheats on his wife or girlfriend, his wife or girlfriend finds out, and then he begs her to take him back. It's not that he stopped being attracted to her and started being attracted to someone else. It's that he started being attracted to more than one person at the same time. You can experience physical attraction to more than one person. It has nothing to do with monogamy. I brought up cheating to prove that people can be attracted to more than one person at a time. Do you understand? You seem to think what I'm saying is people cheat equals monogamy. Bad. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying people cheat in part because you can experience attraction to more than one person. Unless you think the people that are going and cheating do not enjoy the person they're cheating with, that's literally inherent to the action of cheating. No, you're saying people willing to cheat is linked to attraction to multiple people, but I don't think that makes poly a necessity. When did I say that it's a necessity? You're putting words into my mouth because you feel like I'm attacking your monogamous relationship or whatever, but that's not what I'm saying at all. In fact, I said two seconds ago or a few minutes ago that I think monogamy is the right decision for a lot of people. I think people who experience extreme jealousy should not be in an open relationship or poly relationship. And I think that there are some people that just genuinely don't really experience attraction outside of their primary relationship. And those people shouldn't be in anything other than a monogamous relationship. I even said that much. You're arguing with yourself. I didn't say this. All I said was innate to cheating is the fact that people can experience attraction to more than one person at the same time. Initially, you said people feeling the need to cheat shows Polly is the solution for some. No, but that's not what I said. That's not what I said. <laughs> I never said that. I didn't say if you cheat, it means you should be in a poly relationship. No. If anything, if you cheat, maybe probably being in a poly relationship is the worst thing you can do because you have serious communication and trust problems and you cannot be in a non-monogamous relationship at all if you struggle to communicate to your partner. So actually, if you're the type of person to cheat, the last relationship you should enter is an open or poly one. That's a terrible idea for you. Terrible, terrible, terrible idea. I am all I said was that cheating means that human beings have the capacity to experience attraction to more than one person at a time, which is a factually true statement. That's all I said. From that information, we can understand oh, it's not necessarily the norm that everyone needs to be monogamous. 
clearly this is in within normal human capacity to experience attraction to more than one person. That's what I was saying. I wasn't saying cheating means that those people should be in open relationship. Fuck no. <laughs> no, if you are someone who cheats and lies to your partners, please do not enter the open relationship sphere. Please don't. I, we don't want you here, man. We don't want you here. Okay, you need to have a high level of communication and openness. And if you don't have that, please do not enter this sphere. No. No. How does this evolve the current situation? Oh, well, I'm just talking about the fact that monogamy is something that is not innate or inherent to human beings. Can you cheat in poly relationships? Yes, yes. Oh my God, yes. You do not know how many people I've spoken to who... One second. You guys are going to have to wait for the tea. Okay, sorry about that. Um, Dude, I've had poly friends and like non-monogamous friends who have been cheated on basically the tldr is like hey this person is like a terrible person you shouldn't sleep with them you shouldn't talk to them blah 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 it's a bad idea to talk to them and then they do it anyways and then they regret having done it because guess what their partner wasn't lying to them they were being open and honest with them and then that relationship falls apart because they can't communicate and respect each other's decisions and value each other's words you break the boundaries of that relationship whatever the boundaries are of that relationship that is you breaking it poly is not just go fuck whoever you want without any repercussions all the time that's not that's just being a shitty person so yeah these are different so anyways cheating is just the action of being dishonest essentially yeah you should not be in a relationship if you cheat you should be in therapy. These emotions, like, um, dealing with the, the way that people perceive me from breaking up with him or, or him, like, you know, that whole thing. So I, it was because of that that I then looked for emotional support. Um, and so, um, yeah. Damn, I came at the wrong time. <laughs> no, dude. No, sorry. Last one, and then I'm not going to respond to this person's chat messages anymore, and then we're going to get back on, to on topic. And we're going to, last thing. So some cheaters are just people that need to, that need different boundaries and Polly solves that. Okay. I will make it really clear for you, dude. Okay. You ready? Here we go. Let's, let's lay down the ground rules here really quickly. Okay. Cheating. Oops. Cheating equals bad. Cheating. equals bad okay do not enter non-monogamy because you are a cheater that will not solve your problem cheating is only evidence that human beings have the capacity to be attracted to more than one person at a time. Cheating equals bad. Do you understand? The fact, and now here, imagine a guy, all right, who is not in a relationship. Non-monogamy are two words. Okay, you're a loser. Um, imagine a, a world where this guy who's like, oh my God, I got these two bad bitches and they're telling me to pick, but I like both of them. What do I do? Actually, no, forget it. Easier. Twilight. Twilight. Love triangles. This trope in fiction. Okay. Bella likes both of them. She likes both of them. She experiences attraction to both of them. It doesn't mean she's allowed to suddenly just start dating both of them and lying to them. No, it just means that she, it is a fact that she likes both of them. That's it. And now if all of them were on board and 
Edward was like, yo, you could date Jacob. I don't mind. If you're still dating me, I don't mind. And if Jacob was like, yo, for real, you could date Edward. I don't mind. As long as I also get to date you. Great. Excellent. That would be an open, good relationship. That's okay. Or like a poly relationship actually there. That would be fine. Maybe for some people, maybe if Edward and Jacob were chill with it, that would be a perfect poly relationship. But if Edward and Jacob weren't cool with it, then she couldn't just magically decide to start dating both of them and it would be fine. She couldn't be like with Edward having his weird vampire baby and be like, you know what? I'm going to start dating Jacob and there's nothing you can do about it. Sorry. Or start lying to him. No. No. Can you give a different example of human beings have the capacity to be treated uh, th that could be attracted to more than one person other than cheating? I think the Twilight example is perfect. That's it. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, let's move on. I won't bring up cheaters anymore to explain this point since it's too complicated a point. And when you say, hey, this thing that happens all the time, cheating, which happens all the time, it's evidence that human beings have the capacity for attraction to more than one person. From now on, I will just bring up Twilight and Love Triangles so that people who have their trauma about cheating won't think that I'm saying cheaters should be in poly relationships. Cheating means it's okay to date multiple people. Cheating means that it's okay to cheat. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. Not a good example since Jacob is actually secretly in love with Edward and we all know it. Okay, that's why I think it should be a polycule. You agree. You agree and you are based, okay? All right. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right. I'm just saying it is within human, it is within reasonable human behavior to feel attraction to more than one person. You are not a bad person for feeling attraction to another person. In the same way that like, if your friend shows up to your birthday party without a gift, you're allowed to be a little upset and hurt, especially if you got her a really good gift. You're not allowed to then shove her and be like, you're a fucking bitch and I hate you and I think you should die. You're not allowed to do that. Your feelings can be valid. How you act on those feelings is a completely separate point. Experiencing attraction to someone who you know is married does not make you a fucking horrible monster that needs to be crucified. Now, how you act on those feelings, that speaks on your character. That explains who you are. So why don't, all we know right now is that the two of them develop feelings for each other. Okay, so for anyone who missed it, if this is accidentally being, it's my fault, I was not clear. I apologize, I will be more clear. To catch anyone up, because I have to fucking, guess I have to catch up on my goddamn stream TLC, but YouTuber streamer named Noah J, um, who was married to someone, some other person started talking to Foosley and the two of them started talking to each other and started developing feelings for each other. While this guy Noah J was still married. So let's find out what happens. <laughs> it's easy to emotionally attach yourself to people when you're suffering. Yeah, no, guys, it, it like, it's, yeah, it's what I did. I, I was going through something and I looked for someone who else who was also going through something and I should have like literally been like nip it in the bud right there and been like yo <laughs> that is not like me I should not be dumping to you like this like that's not but instead it felt so good to, to be heard and to be related to I was like wait yeah you get it <laughs> oh my god you get it and we're both like you know like like we're both creators and, and streamers and then like um our SOs or like form you know they were not and like we had so much like so many of our struggles were the same so I felt so hurt at the time <sighs> and um it doesn't matter though you know it was the dumbest mistake the dumbest regret of my life the guilt I felt and still feel that th there was a day I felt so guilty um and all I wanted to do was like just like get on a call with her and apologize so deeply and um and I uh I remember I was I was actually with my parents 
And nobody knew at this time, not one, not one soul except me. And I remember feeling like so tight in every part of my body. And uh, all I was hearing was like this ringing and, and my parents were like talking to me. Right. And I'm just nodding like, mm hmm. Yeah. 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 And trying to breathe. And I went to the bathroom and I was like, I was like, can I go to the bathroom? And I just went to the bathroom and I breathed. And I'm like, what am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to do? And, uh, um, anyways, I, uh, so, um, we, we obviously, uh, I tried to apologize. I sent a letter, but, uh, I don't know if it was ever received. And I, um, we, then we cut all contact. I was like, I cannot, I can't, like, this is just, uh, it's not okay. It's not okay. Um, in my, in my mind, like I was always thinking we could, we could date after we could, we could be together after all of this. <laughs> like that's what's in the stars is like, where we connect on such a fundamental level, we'll get together after all of it. And I was like, hell no, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> this will not, this will not be like how it happens. And I couldn't live with myself. And, um, oh, honey, hi, hi honey. cats. Um, anyways, like the first thing when I saw it like out today, cause there's some like call of duty drama or something. And, um, you know, and it, someone in the Call of Duty space, I don't really know how it happened, but like someone said it, right? And I, I've thought about this day a lot because I've actually, like I, told, I thought about saying it myself to you guys, um, like with no context, just like in a vulnerable state, because uh, I always said to myself, like, I really just want it to be out there. Like I want, I want my community to know that like, I'm, I'm like not, well, I don't think anyone thought I was perfect. I don't portray myself to be perfect, but I, I want people to like, if they support me, they, they, they know I've effed up. You know what I mean? I would not. Yeah. I don't want to just oh, right, hide well, this. I would never like, you know, there's a solution. Some like, Oh, well, we'll just never talk about it. It's like, no, I'm I, the second I saw it, I was like, I felt panic. And then I felt relief and I'm like, I can talk about it and I can say it and I can, I can share that. I made a mistake. It was a horrible, horrible mistake. I regret it so much. And I'm the exact person that I've judged and, and, and looked at and been like, you're disgusting. Who would do that? Like, you're gross. Like, like I've, I'm the exact person. That's me. And, I, and, and living with myself for that first couple months, like, I couldn't. I was just like, I did that. I did that. I'm so, what is wrong with me? Like, I made up every excuse in the book why what I was doing was justified and wasn't wrong. And um, like, you know, like I, I made up, I'm just made up. Oh my God, I can't even believe it. I was just like, and I watched myself Google like why it really wasn't that bad or like coping. And then it turned into me going how to cope with immense guilt. <laughs> how do I do this? How do I live with myself? Um, and then I was just looking for... Wait, so I'm late to this. this the drama is that Fuzli is a real person and that's it? Yeah. Wait, I don't know. And then I told a couple friends, but I couldn't bring myself to tell everybody I knew because I just didn't want to, like, lose everybody. Every friend I told was so understanding of me and disappointed, but so understanding of me. Um, and, yeah, they were really... It was really... Um, just listen to me. And yeah, I don't expect anybody here to be understanding of me. Um, but yeah, I, I'm 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 human. Um, you messed up. I messed up. Stupid rookie mistakes. <laughs> yeah, it's it. I don't really know what else to say. I guess I just. I think I'm sharing what I think is necessary for the for me to share to 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 share yeah i'm like i could give this whole damn time like but i you know um dude being in the public space i always thought that when this came out it'd be the end of my whole career or like as in i would end my career there like i was like when i say it i will end i will not be a streamer anymore i'll be done and it will be out and i can live with myself i can live with knowing the world knows i can't believe i called my mom I call my mom and she's like, Leslie, you're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. <laughs> Dude, what is this? What? What? I'm 
sorry, what is the chat message? <laughs> I'm gonna cheat and Denims will forgive me. Oh wait, I'm a straight man. <laughs> Dude, you got a hella victim complex. It's kind of crazy, man. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna cap, you got hella crazy victim complex. You know I said this about Albert cheating, right? For anyone who doesn't know, very popular uh, streamer guy, fucking I don't know who the fuck, I don't follow this shit because I don't think I should follow it, but now I have to because it's like my job and my coworkers or whatever. I just hate that the internet feels obligated or in, sorry entitled to people's personal lives when there isn't anything like criminal happening and there's no power abuse of like power happening because the second you start abusing your employees or the second you start sexually assaulting people by using your power or the second you start touching or messaging kids you need to be ousted immediately you are a threat to fans and community members and it, you are a danger to people around you shit happens in people's relationships and i don't know i think content creators should be allowed their fucking privacy just like if you have your own interpersonal drama with your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever does it mean all of your coworkers should know fuck no would you want to know would you would you want all of your coworkers to know every time you had an argument with your wife dude that would be fucked up <laughs> that would be fucked up but anyways um, slightly musical Albert cheated on Lily Pichu. And guess what? Guy's a straight guy. And guess what? I said the same thing about him when this came out. I said, dude, that sucks. I feel bad for her. None of my fucking business. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to pretend like I didn't know this information because that's your personal private information and it shouldn't be out here in the fucking public. It's none of our fucking business. Sorry, were there minors involved? No. Was there grooming involved? No. Was it like a fan? No. Okay, it's not my it's not my business. I don't care. I see both of you guys the same way. It's not fair for me to judge you both for information that shouldn't be public. It's not fair. But if you want to think you have a victim complex and I would judge straight men differently, you go ahead and suck your own dick, brother. <laughs> go for it, man. You can ask for forgiveness and yeah, hope and then and, and hope that, um, yeah, I hope you get it. But she was just like so, I don't know, I was so shocked. I was like, dang. <laughs> I'm not quitting. No, I'm not quitting. It's, it's more, I, I don't know. Dude, the call with Noah I, I was so... <laughs> As a, on like, a personal dude, I, front, I do... I would say, one, obviously you have a moral obligation to make sure you keep things platonic if you know someone's in a relationship. This is why me, even in my... Even in any of my um, non-monogamous relationships, the second I know that someone's in a relationship, I'm like, mm, okay, cool, cool, cool. You guys aren't... No? Okay, got it, got it. Got you, dog, got you. Look, Wormy's here. Because it's just like, <laughs> I'm going to be real. I have a moral obligation and I don't want to get caught up in that shit. I'm going to be real with you. Looks real messy. I don't like messy. Um, I'm good. Mm -mm. Messy, not worth it. It's not worth at all. It's not worth at all. Mm -mm. Fellini, thank you for the gift sub. Um, <laughs> Messy number one stop. <laughs> I don't barely got time for one hoe. You get it. <laughs> oh, Acti Kai, that's actually very nice of you. Thanks. Thanks. Um, but also, I do, uh, in terms of like personal judgments that I hold against other people, because everybody has judgments. You can't be free of judgments. Um, I do, I will say, you have way more of an obligation when you're the person that's actually in the relationship. If you're dating someone else, you're the one that has the majority of the obligation to make sure that that shit is not being fucked with, okay? <laughs> Obviously, there is, you know, you still have a moral obligation to not homewreck not that I think even this is an example of homewrecking because nothing happened. Um, 
But I do think in general, it's, it's like 90, 10. Yeah. The person in the relationship who's doing the cheating, it takes 90% of the responsibility because they're the one that made a promise to their partner. The other person has like a 10% responsibility. Both are wrong and both still should do the right thing. But like, I do think that that's only fair, you know? If they're only talking, I don't see the issue. Did they do something else? Well, I mean, from the way that Fuzzy has described it, I mean, we saw like half the video. I don't know how much more of this is dedicated to the actual conversation, but it it's, seems like it was just they started talking because she had just gotten out of a relationship and she was pretty heartbroken over it. She met this guy who was married already and they started talking and then they got close. They played a bunch of Valorant games, became really close and then realized, oh, we have feelings for each other and we're spending all this time together. And this is definitely emotional cheating. And neither of them did the adult thing and said, wait, no, I'm going to like you too much. You have to, we either have to stop being friends or you have to figure out your relationship. Because this isn't, it's not fair that I'm getting all of this attention and like adoration or whatever that should really be going to the person you're married to. So to be honest, I also wouldn't expect anyone under 30 to have the experience to know how to manage that. Cause you just have to be, uh, uh, you have to put on your big boy pants and realize, no, it is an irresponsible thing for us to keep being friends. Cause we have grown too close and we clearly have feelings for each other. So, yeah. I was like, hey, haven't talked to you in uh, two and a half years. Uh, we've awkwardly avoided each other for years. Trying, because every time we look at each other, we're reminded of our horrible past. <laughs> and I was like, so we should talk, you know, like, how are you doing? Um, I'm really, it's like, I'm really sorry. Um... I'm really sorry I've been ignoring you, but like every time I looked at you, I, I saw like, I saw my deepest regret and I know you're, you know, like, and he's like, hey, it's okay, zero. It's like, I get it. I get it. Twice. And uh, he was like, you know, talk about it. I was like, I'm going to talk about it. He's like, you can say whatever you want to say. And I was like, thank you. Um, yeah, he was really great about it. But yeah, I felt so, God, like, I felt so bad. Like, when I would see him, he would, like, make me think of everything I didn't want to, like, see in myself. I'd try to forget about it, but I would think about it. The ironic part is, like, LSF is um, crucifying both of them for feeling bad about the most minor version of their crime. That they both knew that they liked each other more than just friends and continued to hang out and engage on those feelings despite not doing anything physically. And they felt bad because they knew that they were hanging out in a way that was, that they were playing league games, not as friends, but as Discord kitten and um, Discord mod. I don't know what the other, what, what's the opposite of Discord kitten. You guys get the point. You guys get the idea. Discord wolf? I don't fucking know, dude. All the time. It's where we can see your monitor frames. Oh, that's me. You can see my... I, this is just not how I saw my first stream going. Isn't that weird? My first stream is just a... Uh... Yeah. This is not how I saw it <laughs> going. But, like, do you actually believe they weren't physical? Yeah. Dude, they're gamers and streamers. They don't leave their fucking house. I totally believe it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, you don't have to me. Uh, it's cool if you say like screw you dude um you're gross that's actually disgusting um, listen if they lived in a streamer house together i'd be like but that's not what happened <laughs> you know whatever um it's okay um uh, <laughs> and a lot of people are like i hope she's okay hope you're doing okay i i feel a weight lifted guys i i feel a weight lifted and and do with that information what you will and it's okay um it's okay if uh and maybe yeah Oh, none of us expected this. Yeah. I was like, how am I? I was like, I'm going to deal with my parents finding out. I was like, I got to tell my parents. I got to tell my mom. She's like, anything else you're hiding from me? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs>
it's another stumbling block. I just want to share that I'm a, I'm a human who I hope you don't put on a pedestal, who makes mistakes because I'm an idiot. And don't be me and don't aspire to be me um, and don't need to forgive me. Um, and uh, I just go on for 20 more minutes. I'm also curious. Can we speed it up just a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny little bit? And any of that. So, uh, so look you right now. All right, stuff for Valorant. <laughs> so they didn't do anything physical. They played League. Okay, Valorant, which is only a little bit different, but while liking each other, so it wasn't even that much of like an emotional cheating situation. People need lives. Leave these people alone. Y yeah, yeah. It it's just it. It's also even if they did, which I don't. Seemingly they didn't. It's also none of our fucking business. <laughs> like it's just not any of our business. It's their personal business. Just like it wouldn't be your business if Bob at your fucking office cheated on his wife. It's not your business, man. Oh, and the only reason this even came out in the first place is because another creator went scorched earth after his supposed friend sided with his lying abuser over him. Yeah, some other guy, not any of the parties involved, came out and said, did you know that this happened? League and Valorant ruining relationships again, just a different way this time. <laughs> also, I mean, like, I think that there are cheaters who are assholes, who are shitty people who don't respect the people that they date. And then they, I think that there are cheaters who are just not happy with their relationship. And the action is still wrong regardless, to be very clear. But I do think that there are two sort of distinct groups where... I think the latter group is in this relationship and they know they don't want to be in this relationship. They hate this relationship, but they're still holding out that it'll work, especially if you're married. It's a lot harder to break off marriages than it is just like dating someone. And then you, instead of doing the big boy pants thing and being like, this relationship isn't working. It's not working. It's not working. We shouldn't. We should break up. We should get divorced, whatever. But it's a lot easier to do the human thing and be like, no, I'm just going to pursue this fling. And then pursuing this fling will make breaking up easier. I, I do think that those are just two distinct groups. The problem is none of our business. And it's also not what happened in this instance, but it's also none of our business. But also on that topic really quickly, um... Again, it's still wrong and you should still be a mature adult. Always, always, always. It's kind of like just because somebody else is being an asshole doesn't give you the right to be an asshole. Just because your relationship sucks and you hate your relationship and you don't want to be in that relationship anymore, it doesn't give you the right to just be an asshole, right? Um, but is it is it so bizarre that someone who's in a relationship that they hate... Or And I'm not talking about this situation. I'm talking about a completely different situation. I'm talking about just the idea, not this situation. If, so, if someone, let's call him Billy, was in a relationship and he didn't like his wife because his wife was just like a huge bitch, okay? In every, in every way, all right? She just, she just insisted on putting the, the cereal before the milk, okay? And he was like, dude, you can't be doing this. You fucking, I can't. It's get, we're get, this relationship is going to end because you keep fucking doing this, bitch. Let's just pretend for a second. So this is Billy's relationship. Is it so bizarre that he would seek companionship with someone who puts the cereal first before the milk? And is like, you get it. Oh my God, you put this. And then you put the milk. Oh. I've been trying to explain this to Sarah for years and she doesn't want to listen. She doesn't want to listen. Who the hell puts milk for Sarah? Because she's crazy, dude. She's fucking crazy. And then you you go with your the way that your emotions feel, and you it makes you happy to be with this other person. Instead of growing the fuck up and saying, no, Sarah, that's it. We're getting a divorce. I can't handle it anymore. It's just procrastination. That's what it is. It, there's like cheaters who are shitty and they don't care about their partner's feelings and that's why they cheat. They want what they want. They want their short-term entertainment. They want pussy now. And so they get it and they don't care. And they they work in the world of uh, um, 
apologize after, ask for forgiveness, not for permission. And then I think that there are people who are procrastinators. They're procrastinating ending their relationship and they're following their feelings instead of, you know, doing the shit that needs to get done. Magic, think of it the 20 months. So the only way, so you talk to someone, find out you have chemistry, you're suddenly, all of a sudden an emotional cheater. Only way this makes sense is if they screwed or had some physical content. Dude, you overestimate the intelligence and also experience that people on LSF have. You have to understand LSF is crawling with losers who do not leave their house. And they see this and they're like, wow, what a whore. I bet she cheated. Time to post this. Have you seen the comments on LSF? Have you? <laughs> in sickness and in health, mental illness falls under sickness, right? Regarding the cereal. <laughs> but if you put the cereal into the bowl of water and then poke a hole in the same nail, you can poke a hole into the bottom of the cup. The same cup completely cracks. <laughs> I'm sorry. For anyone who hasn't seen that, I'm making you guys watch it again. In the same cup, you would be surprised. A few amazing small science experiments. Watch them blow your mind. Drop some float into clear water. Water turns cloudy. Put cut apple inside. It can change back. This is the magical reduction reaction. If you use a nail to make a hole at the bottom of this cup, the whole bottom of the cup completely cracks. But if you prepare a basin of water, put another identical cup completely into the water, use the same nail to make a hole at the bottom of the cup. You will be, be surprised, surprised to, to find <laughs> when the nail pierces the bottom of the cup, the same, same cup, cup bottom, bottom completely, completely cracks. cracks. You will be, be surprised, surprised to, find to find when the nail pierces the bottom of the cup, <laughs> the same cup bottom completely cracks. But if you prepare a, a basin of water, water and pour, pour it, it into, into the, the water. water. You will be surprised <laughs> to find when the nail pierces the bottom of the cup at that moment, your cup bottom completely cracks, but it is precisely pierced by the nail with a round mole. <laughs> To a hollow ring, simulate rocket launch, just need one matchstick, wrap the match head and stick together in foil, pinch the top and ignite to launch. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> Isn't it amazing? <laughs> Isn't it amazing? <laughs> Bottom. <laughs> completely cracks. Uh, uh, okay. Oh my god. All right. Okay. Now, I have to admit something to all of you. Okay. The real reason I wanted to watch this Foodsley video and I wanted to cover this story. Okay. Here's the real reason. But you guys can't be mad at me. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still thinking about the other video. <laughs> completely cracked. Okay. The real reason is I have to make sure that this community stays normal, okay? And I have to make sure we don't get any freaks in here, okay? Because I like the people we got right now. I'm going to be real with you guys. You guys are mad chill and cool. But, like, don't let it get to your head, all right? Oh, we're going to thank you for the five gifts. Thank you. And I just need people to be chill around here, okay? Any people to be chill. Any people to be cool. And I don't want to see the type of shit at like that I see in other communities because no one ever purges their communities. Not no one, but there are a lot of people that don't purge their communities and then they have all these freaks. It's why I like talking about politics. I don't want conservatards in here that are incapable of changing their mind or being respectful. I don't want you. Uh, I, I feel bad for gaming streamers who have to have those audience members because they don't talk about politics. In the same sort of respect or regard, I don't want the type of people that are like, they think that they are entitled to knowing everything about streamers' lives. Because that is such a freak thing to, to think. That is such a freak thing to think. It's such a freak thing to feel. And it's not normal. Now, if you want to judge Leslie or Foosley for her emotional cheating, you are welcome to do that. If you don't want to watch her anymore, you're welcome to do that. But do not act like you are entitled to this information and that you deserve to know this information. And you guys know that already, but I always got to make sure 
whenever these type of stories come out where someone's personal life gets publicly posted, I got to make sure any of new stragglers or new people we got around here are, are also chill. And seemingly everyone's been chill. So it's very good. Very good. But we got to do this every once in a while. Every like year or so, we got to cover one of these personal parasocial stories to keep shit vibe. Why can't I know when your next doctor appointment is? It's actually on Monday, if you, since you wanted to know. It is actually on Monday. That's actually what my call was about. They were like, hey, can you confirm the appointment? I'm like, you guys literally called me yesterday to do this. Why are you calling me again? <laughs> Why are you calling me again? <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I think Leslie is the most evil human alive. I just feel like we should spend our energy and our hate towards people who deserve the hate. Not towards someone making a mistake in their personal relationship. Because I don't know about you. I. I failed. I will admit it. I'm finally at the point where I can publicly admit it. I failed to go to a very close friend of mine's wedding when I was 19 because I was an asshole. That's why. Because I was an asshole. And I canceled the day before. And I didn't realize that I was an asshole for doing it because I don't care about marriages and I don't care about weddings and I don't care about rings and I don't care about all that stuff. And I suck. And I sucked. And she said, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> we're not friends anymore. I don't care that you don't care about that shit. And I stand by my stance. I don't care about any of that shit. I never will and I never have. But she was right. And it was wrong for me to do that. And she cut me off for it. Okay? And she was a friend I had for a very long time. And she cut me off for it. And she said, no, we're not friends anymore. And I was like, oh. Wow. <laughs> that was actually mad valid of you. <laughs> That was actually like a huge asshole thing of me to do. Are they still married? Yeah. And I reached out to her years later and I said, hey, I was a huge and that was wrong of me to do. And I stand by what I said that like, I still don't care about this, but that doesn't change the fact that you cared about it. And what I did wasn't cool. And I'm not calling to like, have you take me back? I'm just calling to tell you, you were right for what you did. And I learned a lot from it. And Thank you for doing what you did. And if you want to be friends, I will try to be better. Um, but also, it's not your obligation to. So I just wanted to say I'm sorry. And especially now that I actually have the context and have gotten a little bit more brain development from when I was 19 years old. Um, I'm sorry. Genuinely. Very, very genuinely sorry. Because you won't have that moment again. And there's nothing I can do to fix that. And I'm sorry. And she very generously was like, I miss being friends with you. And I want to be friends with you again. And I accept your apology. You do really dumb shit, dude. <laughs> you do really stupid shit, man. And your brain doesn't realize that you're being a huge fucking asshole. And you do this selfish shit. And you're like, and then you have a moment of clarity. And you're like, dude, what was wrong with me? Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. That was not cool of me to do that. Was she also 19? No, uh, I met her when I was in high school and uh, she was like a year or two older than me. And I also have a late birthday and she has an early birthday. So she was getting married, I think, at 22. Um, she actually, she was also an immigrant. So she was a grade older than the grade that she was in. And she was a year older than me. And my birthday was late. So we have a lot of years in between us, even though technically I was like a freshman and she was a sophomore. Um, so we had a happy ending. And I hung out with her last year when I was in New York and she has a little baby and she put the baby in my hands and the baby started crying. And I was like, I don't know how to hold babies. I'm going to be honest with you, please. I'm so sorry for, <laughs> please. <laughs> I'm really sorry, man. I don't know how to hold babies. <laughs> she was like, it's okay. And then she picked the baby back up. <laughs> um, so yeah, my point was I, wow. I kind of feel Leslie right now after getting that off my chest. Wow. I feel like free by it. I feel Oh, <laughs> feel freed by it. You make a lot of stupid mistakes. At the very least, if you're under 30, you make a lot of really dumb mistakes. Things that like, when you have a moment of clarity, you're like, wow, that's really fucked up what I did. And that wasn't cool. And I shouldn't act that way. And that's not cool behavior. And I wouldn't like it if something was important to me. Um, but it wasn't important to my friend. They just, they just ditched. That wasn't cool, man. That's not, that's not... And then you grow and you learn from that. And all you can do is 
apologize for what you did and say, hey, sorry, that was my bad. Apologies. Showing up for stuff like that was hard for me um, to do until I realized it's meaningful for them and it's a way to show love and support. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I lost a very important... <laughs> Quick, should I punt this baby across the pond? Yeah. <laughs> I learned a very important lesson and I lost a very cool friend and she was right to do it. And she was very cool for um, rescinding it. And I think your 20s should be the time for making minor mistakes. Okay. Obviously, if you're assaulting people, you know that that's wrong. Okay. If you're doing something and the other person is saying, no, I think that that's pretty obviously wrong. There are a lot of things that I think are obviously wrong. Minor. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, stop. Do not say minor mistakes and post the dog to disrespect me. Stop. Um, <clears throat> Not that kind of minor mistake. No, like not showing up to things and learning that you're supposed to show up to things and that it's not cool to just fucking cancel. All right? Like learning that those type of mistakes. Being like, oh, fuck, that's a terrible decision and I shouldn't fucking do stupid shit like that. Um, that is the, that's the time to do it. That's the time to learn. And I think this is a perfect example of that. I think Foosley talking to someone else, getting emotionally invested and not immediately cutting it off, that that's the type of mistake that you make when you're 20 and then you learn from it and you realize I need to be, I have to be an adult and I can't allow this to happen because it's mean. It's a, it's a mean thing to do. Less severe mistakes. Exactly. Thank you. Sorry. We no longer can say stupid minor mistakes anymore. <laughs> um, uh, isn't she in her 30s? Yeah, she said it happened before then. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, and you just own your mistakes and try to be a better person. You just own your mistakes and try and be a better person when you can. So, yeah. As long as you're always trying to be a better person and you're not doing things that are very obviously wrong, like talking to minors. <laughs> like when I was 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, basically since I was 19, I knew I was not supposed to talk to minors and I didn't talk to minors. I also didn't want to talk to minors, but I also knew that I was not supposed to. That's an obvious thing. Yeah. Honest question, because this is a situation between a friend of mine. What's your take on emotional cheating from both sides if the person cheated with their partner's best friend? Like, Sarah's best friend is Jenny. And Billy emotionally cheated with Jenny. Is that what you're asking? I'm just double checking. Yes. In my opinion, if you are close friends with the person that has no idea is getting they're getting cheated on, you have just as you are just as responsible. If like here, sorry for diagram for anyone who got a little bit lost. Nope. There we go. Here we go. Sorry, in a situation where it's like, here's Sarah, here's her best friend, uh, Jenny, and here's uh, Billy, and they're married. Sorry, that did not look good. These people are married, and he's cheating. He's emotionally cheating with Jenny. I feel like this is a 50-50 responsibility. Because Billy has a responsibility to his wife to be open and honest, and he's not being open and honest. And Jenny has a responsibility to her best friend to be open and honest, and she's not being open and honest. Versus if he's cheating with, like, some random lady who happens to know. I don't know. Samantha? 
Samantha only has like a 10% responsibility, only because she has no moral direct obligation to Sarah. She doesn't even know her. She has a more, the 10% is just because you should always try and be a good person because it's the right thing to do. Whereas in this case, Jenny's being a total fucking cunt. <laughs> That's your best friend and you're doing her dirty like that? Like, that's not cool. You're not a best friend if you're letting that happen. You're just not. So that's what I would consider if that makes sense. <laughs> Samantha ain't shit. That's why she wasn't in the circle to begin with. You get it, dude. <laughs> Make them all lesbians to highlight that only gay people treat. Good idea. Excellent. Men actually never do anything wrong, so you're right. I just got here. I thought you were drawing a cute frog. My bad here. I, I don't know if I could draw a cute frog. Oh, God, it's not starting well. Guys, this, <laughs> I can't draw a cute frog. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay, one more attempt. Do frogs have hands? No, right? This is my best attempt at a frog. He's kind of laying a little bit. Wait. Wait. Give him some stiletto stilettos. I'm a walking frog. They got tails? Excellent. <laughs> is it a potato with legs? Listen, all right? I'm using a fucking mouse, all right? All right, I'm doing my best here, man. Fuck. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Anyways, 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 anyways. All right. We finished our normalcy segment. Um, yeah, man, if, if, if it's like a, a sore point for you, I mean, you don't have to like any fucking content creators on the internet. In fact, you should like zero content creators on the internet. You should use them and abuse them for content, milk them like the content rags they are. Okay. Wring them dry of all their content for your personal pleasure and enjoyment. And if you feel so gracious and kind, Throw them a little penny in the form of a sub, okay? Throw them some scrap change, if you feel so kind. You're like, yeah, well, that was a pretty good, yeah, that was decent content, maybe. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And beyond that, if you like someone, you like them. And if you don't like them, you don't like them. And that's cool. You don't have to watch anyone's content. People you don't like. There are content creators who I don't like, and I don't watch them, because I don't like them. They just give me the weird heebie-jeebies. They haven't done anything necessarily wrong. I just don't like them. They, they got weird vibes. And that's cool, dude. Right? Call me out, bro. It's true. I'm sorry. I don't want to be the one to say it, but like Nesua, he's a fake bald person. And it, I don't like that he, he lies about it. I don't like that he pretends to be bald. Motherfucker can grow hair. Can you believe it? And I don't want to watch someone who's being who's, uh, unfair bald valor, dude. Some dude's got to work real hard to be bald, man. It's I fucked up. I self-aware streamer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Shout out to Nesva. Really cool. Actually, Nesva is the goat. Nesva is a real cool person. Spartan, thank you for the five gift subs. Thank you. Um, but moving on beyond that. Uh, yeah, and personally, I think it's healthy for everyone involved to not be parasocial about the creators you watch or don't watch. I think it's healthier for everyone involved to not be that invested in people's personal lives. I think the only instance where it's important to be... I don't understand how the right side of Denim's background is Zoomer-coded AF and the left side is Millennial-coded AF. Because I'm how a cusper. Such a split? Am I the only one who sees this? I'm a cusper, dude. Okay? I've been a cusper. You know how hard it is? One part of me is like, dude, I want to get, like, checkered patterns. And the other part of me is like, no, man, you want to get... What's the other millennial... What's a, what's a millennial thing that people, millennials really liked? I don't remember. Fuck. Beige. Actually, I did kind of have a beige phase. I did zebra print. Yes. One part of me is like, I want zebra print. And the other part's like a checkered print. I'm like, no, I can be neither. Sex rug. So. So. Live, laugh, love. I did have a lift. Completely cracked. Wait, do we have a completely cracked emote? Or are you guys just typing that shit? <laughs> completely cracked. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Enough yapping, enough blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Being parasocial is cringe and 